Today in this project we're going to replace this rather dull looking winter sky in Venice. Okay, and the sky I've got in mind is this one over here. Okay, full of drama and life. Okay, so let's go back and the first thing we need to do is make a selection uh, of the sky here. So we'll pick up the uh, quick selection tool to start the ball rolling. And then I'm just going to increase the brush size by using the square bracket keys there. And then I'm going to drag that quick selection brush over the sky. And then it's got a little bit excited over here and started selecting the tops of some of these buildings. But we're going to fix this up um, by uh, um, applying uh, this uh, selection to a layer mask. And then we can paint and retouch that layer mask to perfect um, uh, the uh, selection here. So we'll go and pick up uh, a levels adjustment. I don't really want to make a levels adjustment itself. I just want to be able to use this uh, layer mask here. We're going to hold down the Option and Shift keys on a Mac. That would be the Alt and Shift keys on a PC. And then click on the layer mask so we can view it as a mask overlay. And then we're going to zoom in. Okay, so we're going to use the Command Spacebar on a Mac, Control Spacebar on a PC. And then I'm just going to zoom in to some of the areas that I actually want to take a closer look at. I'm going to zoom into 200%. Now this is quite a complicated shape to select. So what I might do is I might choose the um, magic wand. I'll set the uh, tolerance back to its default 32 to begin with to see whether I can pick up this shape here using this uh, magic wand tool. I'll just click and then holding down the shift key, click one more time in order to select that. OK, I've selected that shape uh, quite efficiently there. And so we're going to fill this uh, with the foreground color, which yeah, I've got set to black here. And I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut for that, holding down the Alt key on a PC. That's the Option key on a Mac. And then hit the Delete or Backspace key in order to fill that shape with the foreground color. And then from the Select menu, choose Deselect. OK, I'm going to hold down the space bar and drag over to the right side where I know there's some other areas of the tops of the buildings that haven't been selected. Now, if the magic wand isn't performing uh, um, or behaving itself for you, you could alternatively select the uh, uh, polygonal lasso tool. And here we can just draw around the tops of the buildings here in order to uh, include those into the mask. OK, so we're just going around the tops of the buildings. This might take a, a while, so I might go back and work with that uh, magic wand that was proving to be quite efficient there. I'll just uh, finish this uh, short section to show you how we can do this alternative. And then just coming back around and double clicking to close that um, selection. And then again, filling with that foreground color, um, Option or Alt delete or backspace to fill with that foreground color and then command or control D to deselect. If you're finding creating this selection a little bit time consuming or arduous then there is a way of fast tracking um, these projects. We um, can load the embedded selection that ships with each of the project files. Okay, and the way we would do this is we can go to the guided panel and then go to the action player. You will have needed to have downloaded um, the uh, load selection action from the markgaler.com website to be able to fast track these projects. Okay, I'll show you how we can do that. Is we can actually just uh, delete that to backtrack. And then we're going to go over to the guided panel and then go to action player. Now I have the uh, load selection action, okay, and also load from path one option, and then we'll click on the play action, and that loads the selection like so. Okay, and then we can come back to the full edit mode, and then we'll bring up that levels adjustment that we looked at earlier. Okay, and that was a way of fast tracking uh, to create a perfect selection. OK, at this stage we want to actually uh, add the new sky to this project. OK, so we're going to go up to the 2 up view. OK, and we're going to uh, click on the sky file and then we're going to drag the background uh, thumbnail from the sky file into the host image which is our Venice image. OK, let's go to the arrange documents icon and then click on the consolidate all. OK, we'll move this sky into position. 
we'll click on the move tool and then drag this to the top of the file like so. Okay let's add the layer mask that we created and then perfected in the layer mask here. So to do that we'll uh, on a Mac we'll command click the layer mask on a PC that would be control click to load it as a selection and then with the sky layer selected click on the add layer mask icon and there we have the new sky. It's going to look a little bit um, uh, unsightly at the moment. We have the sky way too dark near the horizon line creating this very unnatural look and that's, uh, that's our task now is to create a, a happy, happier a composite view with these two files. Okay so the, uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to refine the edge. We've got quite a jagged edge here so let's just uh, try and refine that We'll switch off the Levels 1 layer, it's served its purpose now, so let's uh, click off that Levels 1 to hide that. And then we're going to come to Select Refine Edge. And OK, we'll hide the, um, uh, the Marching Ants from View here. We're in the, uh, the first uh, little icon here, which is viewing it against the, uh, the underlying image. OK, and we're going to go from the View menu, we're going to hide those selection edges. OK, now we're going to uh, require a small amount of feather to soften the edges. Let's zoom in a little bit. I'm using the Command Spacebar on a Mac or Control Spacebar on a PC. And then we'll just zoom around that area in order to zoom in a little bit. And perhaps I'll just uh, Command Plus or Control Plus just to zoom in a couple more times there. OK, so we've softened the edge up um, using the uh, small amount of feather there. Uh, we can backtrack that slightly just to make a slightly crisper edge and then we can use the contract expand slider as you can see we've got quite a large halo uh, at around about zero but by pushing that uh, well over to the right we can hide uh, those edges and we might just need to use a, a fraction more to hide um, that any white halo around the edge there and then we'll select OK and then we'll command zero or control zero to fit on screen OK, now what I want to do is transform um, the sky, but I want to leave the mask perfectly registered uh, with the background layer. So in order to um, uh, transform the pixels without transforming the, max, the mask, we need to click on this little link uh, layer or link icon in order to break that union. OK, now we'll click on the uh, pixels rather than the layer mask because these are the ones we want to transform. And then using the keyboard shortcut, Command T on a Mac or Control T on a PC, we're going to uh, enter into free transform. And now I'm going to click on that um, handle on the bottom of the transform bounding box and move that sky into position. OK, now I'm going to zoom out a couple of times, Command minus or Control minus, uh, so I can just get the, um, the top of that handle there and raise that so we've got a nice dark sky at the top there. And I can also transform that uh, right hand side a little just to snap to the document bounds. Now I'm happy with the new position of the sky, I'll just uh, uh, commit that transformation by clicking on the green uh, check mark there. OK, and we'll Command-0 or Control-0 to fit on screen. Now this winter scene, we're losing uh, the uh, contrast and also the luminosity of these buildings as they recede towards the horizon line. And this sky is not uh, emulating that. So we're going to need to uh, brighten the sky up as we approach the horizon there. So in order to do that, we're going to use an adjustment layer. Hold down the Alt or Option key and then bring in a Levels Adjustment. OK, and we're going to click on the Use Previous Layer to create Clipping Mask option there and then select OK. And then we're going to raise the Gamma Slider in the Levels dialog around to, uh, to about 2, a Gamma of 2 there. So it's significantly brighter on the horizon. OK, and then we're going to select the Gradient tool in the Tools bar. We're going to select um, the black-white gradient, which is the third one along. OK, and we're going to select the linear option. And I'm also going to make sure that we're working at 100% opacity, and I don't want the reverse option checked in this instance. OK, so we're going to click at the top of the image file, and then drag down towards those distant buildings holding down the shift key to constrain that gradient to a perfect vertical and then let go of the mouse. 
If we need that sky a little bit darker at the top, I can drag perhaps a little bit further down the sky. Okay, and there I'm getting a good dramatic sky there, but much lighter at the horizon line to settle in with those distant buildings. I want to create uh, the effect of the setting sun now, which is striking these buildings on the other side of the canal. So I want a little bit of extra warmth and brightness um, emanating from behind these buildings to give the impression of the setting sun. So we're going to bring in another adjustment layer. Again, holding down the Alt Option key and bringing in levels. I'm, again, I'm going to clip this to the underlying layers and we'll select OK. Now from the RGB, I'm going to move down to the reg uh, channel and then we're going to adjust the red value here. Okay, just moving it slightly to the left will make the sky a little bit warmer. Okay, and I'm also going to go to the green channel and push that gamma slider um, perhaps also in the same di uh, direction just to make it uh, a little bit uh, uh, yellow as well. I can also return to that red channel perhaps to increase the amount of red there. Okay, now we've got a nice warm glow. It's um, filtering out over the entire sky, but I do want to restrict it just to a localized area. Okay, and the way I'm going to do that is um, uh, uh, add another gradient into this layer mask. Uh, except this time, I'm going to select a radial gradient, and I'm actually going to pick the foreground transparent. Now the foreground color is black, okay, and we're going to hit the reverse option in this instance. I'm going to click just behind this building and drag a gradient out into the sky. Okay, and as we turn our attention over to that layer mask, you'll see that uh, we're actually filling that layer mask to restore all of the original color and tonality uh, to the sky, except in this localized area from behind the buildings there. Okay, and just to finish this project off, I'm going to add a vignette and we're going to uh, select on the uh, rectangular marquee tool, entering in a, a feather value of 200 there. I'm going to click in the upper portion of that sky and drag down to the lower right there. And then from the edit menu, choose copy merged. Well, actually, before we copy merge, we really need to come to the uh, select menu and choose inverse. So I've got the uh, outside edge of this file selected. And now I need to come to the edit copy merged option. OK, those pixels have been copied to the clipboard. And if we go to the edit menu and come back down to paste, we're going to paste them to a new layer. And I'll just rename this layer vignette and then click to one side to commit the name and then we'll set the blend mode to multiply to darken and if we want to bring the uh, opacity of that vignette down then we can just bring that down so we don't have such a strong vignette bringing it down to around about 50% here okay and just to show you uh, before and after of this file we're going to uh, hold down the alt or option key and then click on the background to see what uh, the file looks like with a much more dramatic sky.